XR for the Enterprise. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Greg Sullivan, Director for Mixed Reality at Microsoft. Welcome, Greg. Hello, Tanya. You've been at Microsoft a long time. In fact, quite a number of years. Give us a brief summary of your journey there. Uh, it's been a wild ride. Um, I've had a variety of roles from, uh, I started as a network systems engineer when we got into the network operating system back in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, I've had roles in business development, sales, uh, core product management, uh, communications, um, and now I get to work on what I think is the coolest thing going on, uh, maybe in the industry, and that's uh, Microsoft HoloLens and Mixed Reality. In fact, Microsoft has a solid strategy for posi positioning mixed reality in the enterprise. So start by telling us Microsoft's story behind the HoloLens and mixed reality. Yeah, this is really the, the, the culmination of a vision um, of, of many people, but Alex Kipman is the guy that really drove this. He's a technical fellow here at Microsoft and known uh, as by some as the uh, uh, father of the Microsoft Connect, the video gaming peripheral. Um, and with Connect, what Alex thought about was the idea that computers uh, don't understand their environments or the people that use them. And what if we had the ability to, for computers to perceive their worlds? What kinds of things would be possible if we gave these machines the powers of perception and ultimately cognition? So what does it mean when your computer understands the room that you're in and, uh, and, and the person that walks into it and then can track them dancing in a video game. Well, that was Microsoft Connect. That was really the beginning of a journey that has led to HoloLens 2. And uh, it's the fundamental idea is, let's give these machines the ability to perceive people, places, and things. And that unlocks this underlying principle that we talk about as mixed reality, where you take the digital world and you bring it into the physical room that you're sitting in. And once you do that, there are a whole range of exciting possibilities, and we think of them as superpowers, things that you can do that you just couldn't do before. Um, and so that's what, uh, that's what we think about as, as mixed reality. So let's talk about that. How is HoloLens being used in commercial applications today, and what differentiates the Microsoft offering? Well, there are a range of use cases. We're seeing across a, a set of vertical industries, a bunch of, of horizontal use cases from remote assist so where you can kind of be present with someone halfway across the world and help them through a complicated task. We're seeing training opportunities where if you're gonna install this very complicated piece of machinery, um, you can have a digital overlay showing you a step-by-step -step process of how to do it so it's almost impossible to make a mistake. We're seeing mixed reality used in creative ways. Um, we've seen uh, in New York, a ballet company did a mixed reality ballet performance. Um, we're seeing design and architecture uh, help visualize new things in three dimensions. So we're really just, there's such a wide range of use cases. Anything that you can do in the digital world today, just about, can be made better and more meaningful uh, by bringing it into the three dimensional world that we spend the rest of our time in. And that's really the beginning of the journey that we're on. Explain, if you will, Azure Mixed Reality Services and how it ties into XR and the enterprise. Yeah, this is, uh, this is part, of the, part of the journey that we've been on. In 2016, we introduced Microsoft HoloLens to the world, and it was the world's first self-contained holographic computer. Um, and, and it was amazing, did amazing things that weren't possible before. With HoloLens 2, we've really expanded that offering to include these cloud services, these Azure Mixed Reality services that take, uh, and I happen to have a, a HoloLens 2 right here, that take this device and extend its capabilities into the cloud. A quick example is this, this device doesn't have the most powerful graphics processor. It's got a Snapdragon 850 CPU, a Qualcomm, uh, you know, basically a mobile phone chip as its central processing unit and the graphic associated GPU. Well, that's not a lot of graphics power if you want to render a 100 milli, million polygon CAD file. But if you can use a cloud service that can do all of the processing and the virtually unlimited power of the cloud to process that 100 milli, million polygon render and then stream the results over the network to this device, you have complemented its capabilities and enabled it to do even more things. So we see this as part of a broader kind of macro trend in computing where the intelligent cloud 
is supplemented by devices at the edge of the network that deliver experiences that people value. And, and whether it's fixing an elevator and having someone in, you know, halfway across the world help you do it, or imagining a new world uh, that you're creating for a, for a play or a production. There are all kinds of ways that the notion of bringing the digital world into the real world uh, can help you do new things. So will 5G factor into this at some point in the future? It will at some point. Uh, I think you know, once we see the network infrastructure rolled out, the advances in low latency and increased bandwidth and quality of service associated with 5G um, are really almost custom designed for mixed reality. We're talking about three-dimensional digital content, real 3D digital objects that exist in front of you that you can interact with. And you can imagine when we want to create these immersive worlds and transport you to them or help you collaborate with someone across the world, there's a lot of data that goes back and forth. And so the advent of 5G networks with those increases in quality of service and bandwidth and, and reduced latency are almost a killer, mixed reality is almost a killer app for those scenarios. So we're really excited about what, uh, what will happen in the future. All right, Greg, let's talk about the future. Where do you see in the near future for XR in the enterprise? Well, we see this as like many technologies, uh, commercial organizations understand that uh, an investment in a device that is not, you know, HoloLens is $3,500 US. It's, it's, you know, it's not, uh, it's not cheap um, in, in every respect of the word, but it, it, if the investments in this device can save me from getting on an airplane and flying across the world to help somebody out, it pays for itself in that one instance. So we're seeing enterprises adopt mixed reality because of the profound returns on the investments that they're able to make. And these devices literally paying for themselves almost overnight. Um, but we think this is part of really a broader trend that is in our view, just an evolution of the interaction model between human beings and digital information. I'm old enough to remember, you know, programming on punch cards. And so the method of communication between me and the computer was holes in pieces of paper. Uh, it was pretty inhuman, but that's how the computer talked. And so we had to learn. Now, what Microsoft, I would argue, has largely been doing over the last several decades is moving that interaction model from one that was on the terms of the computer to one that is more human. And if you're a human, you live in a three-dimensional world and you can interact with three-dimensional objects. We're finally at a point now with HoloLens 2 where you can literally interact with three-dimensional digital objects in the same way that you interact with real things in the world. It's really reallocating dollars and maybe saving a little bit of time. Greg Sullivan, Director for Mixed Reality at Microsoft. Thanks for joining us. If somebody wants to connect with you, what's the best way they can do that? Well, you can find out more at, uh, about HoloLens at hololens.com. Uh, I'm on uh, Twitter at Greg Wardo, and uh, uh, Microsoft.com will, will tell you everything you need to know about all of our products. All right, thanks again. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.